Jack them up, boys. So, uh, I'm going to show you a better way than that this morning. Somebody says, well, how, how, how are we going to do that? I'm going to ask you something. What did you let define you? You don't have that paper you read Wednesday night, do you? There was, uh, and, and that's all right. If you weren't here on Wednesday night, then you need to get on silveradocowboychurch.org. Is that posted? And, and, and listen to what Gloria read. I don't need to read it again on, on this morning. But what she read about the stop of the move of the Holy Spirit. And when that, that move really stopped. And what I'm going to ask you is, what have you let define your life? Well, we're not allowed to pray in school anymore. We're not allowed to... Uh, read the Bible anymore. You know, I was surprised to find out that Yale was started as a Bible school. Because you couldn't tell that now. What have we let define what we do and how we proceed? And that's what's important. To look at, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read just a couple of little excerpts of, of some other things that uh, <clears throat> this was called Shaping America, Roe versus Wade and its impact. Um, Pope John Paul. The second, as a leader in the pro-life movement during his landmark 1998 visit to Cuba, he criticized the, league, the island's legalized abortion policies. No topic related to feminist movement has aroused such passion or controversy. Um, and, and, and that article went on to... Uh, and you can, you can uh, just Google Roe versus Wade and find some of these articles. I'm not going to spend time to read the three pages of that article because there's more important issues for us to look at. We don't need to... I want to I wanna know what defines your life. Are you defined by the things other people do? Are we going to be defined by who we are and what we can do? And it's not just going to the, the polls. I'm, I told you already, I, I believe that uh, there's no excuse for, for an American not uh, voting. Um, there was... Uh, yeah, it's funny, it said I made some changes to a document that I was trying to open and... I don't remember making changes, but I must have opened it. This is called uh, Prayer in the Public Schools, Religion, Education, and Your Rights. Um, there was something that stood out in this particular article, and, and again, you can uh, Google uh, Prayer in Public School and find this. But there's something that stood out. Where faith groups stand regarding prayer in schools. Also, the Supreme Court did not rule against official prayer and Bible reading in, in public schools out of hostility to religion, but rather the justices held that these practices were examples of unconstitutional government interf uh, interference with religion. Thus, the excuse... Uh, Excuses violated the First Amendment, or the exercise violated the First Amendment. Where faith groups stand, faith groups that support the First Amendment and oppose government-sponsored prayer in public schools include the American Baptist Churches, American Jewish Congress, Anti 
Defamation League, Baptist Joint Committee on Public Affairs, Central Conference of American Rabbis, Christian Church, Evangelical Lutheran Church, Fr uh, Friends Committee of National Legislation, the Quakers, General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. These are all people that stood with removing prayer from the church, from the schools. And, and, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, I'm glad to tell you that I found uh, no Pentecost or Word of Faith churches listed in, in this. But all the conservative churches are listed uh, from top to bottom. Um, it went on in this article and it talked about the fact that even Christians started arguing about whether it was right. They spent their church time arguing about whether prayer was okay in church or not. I'm not going to spend any more time on these issues. What I want you to do is I want you to take your Bibles right now and turn to Luke chapter 24. I want to look at the difference. What we can make. You can make a difference voting, but I'm going to tell you, if you have to make a choice between what I'm going to talk about this morning in voting, don't vote. I praise God that we live in a country that we have the right to vote. I praise God that we have the right, that we live in a country that we can do both what I'm talking about this morning and vote too. But I'm telling you there's a greater issue at stake than all of the things that we looked at. I'm going to promise you that you can make a difference if you'll listen this morning and put it in operation in your life. Acts chapter 24 and we're going to I, I'm sorry Luke chapter 24 yes thank you <clears throat> and we're going to look at verse 46 through 49 And he said to them, thus it's written. And thus it is necessary for Christ to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Now there's a scripture in the, in the uh, epistles that talks about that we're going to suffer with Christ. The church has got this thing down really good about suffering. They have got it down really good about well, you know, they're taking prayer away from us. They won't let us talk about God in church. They won't let us pray. You know, the establishment clause was even used to keep pastors and preachers from praying at graduation ceremonies. We go, well, you know, what's going to happen next? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next. If you'll do what Jesus said the next thing was. See... The Bible talks about Mark chapter 10. It says that nobody's left house, homes, father, mother, brothers, sisters, uh, lands that won't be repaid a hundredfold in this life. And we like to claim that. We like to claim what God's going to do for us and how God's going to bless us. And He is. And then the next verse says, with persecutions. But He didn't say stop. He didn't say quit. He didn't say lay down and let them walk on you. I refuse to let anything mark what we've done, what we're going to do. I refuse to let Roe versus Wade or anything else. You know, something that's cool to me is the one they used for Roe in that the, the gal that they used, she later became a Christian and denounced everything that she had done. But that's not even the issue here. Madeline Murray O'Hare, you know, that come to find out, she really wasn't even, this guy even said that she was the one. She wasn't even the one that filed the, the main landmark case. But everybody was moved by what Madeline Murray O'Hare, you know, I got to, I was up. Uh, 23 or 24 years old, I got to hear her son, who she was trying to protect, talk. You know what he said? Jesus is the answer. 
Ann Smith sat down on an airplane next to Madeline Murray O'Hare and told her, said, you know what you need to do is you need to investigate what Jesus can really do in your life. I don't know if she ever became a Christian or not. That guy seemed to think that she repented of doing what she did, so I have to assume that, that he has some knowledge that I don't have. But I'm not moved by who knows Jesus and who doesn't. I want everybody to know Jesus because that's his plan. But it's going to depend on what you do. The next thing he said was in that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Listen to this. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you're endowed with power on high. Why do you think that he wanted them to wait until they were endowed with power from on high, till they were filled with the Holy Spirit before they begin to do it? Let's look and see. That's the best proof of why he told them to do what he did. Turn to Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost, we're going to start in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. How many of you know what was happening? Say that again. No, we're not even, well, I don't even care where they were. They were all with one accord in one place. What does that mean? So what would we call that today? Thank you. Corporate prayer. I'm going to tell you, if you're not here on Wednesday nights for corporate prayer, you missed it. Because the power of God comes in the coming together of believers for one reason. The power of God comes from us coming in. He said, let my house be called what? A house of prayer. You're never going to come get entertained here, okay? This is not a house of entertainment. We had a vision casting meeting on Friday night. There are things that we will do to outreach to non-believers. But they should always be coupled with a move of the Holy Ghost. Because if it's not coupled with a move of the Holy Ghost, or if you're reading the New King James Bible like I do most of the time, the Holy Spirit. That's one reason I like the old King James or the authorized edition because it just calls it what it is. It sounds like a whole lot more power to me. But I'm going to tell you, that it's a move of the Holy Spirit that is going to touch your community. It is a move of the Holy Spirit, but it's going to take you and I coming together in one accord, in one place. Does that mean we always agree about everything? Well, we probably should. Are we going to? No, because everybody's got their own opinion. And I have an understanding of that. You're entitled to your own opinion just as long as you don't mind being wrong. Because I'm always right. At least I got you to laugh when I said that. Here's what you need to know. God is always right. His word is always true. 
And we're not entitled to our own opinion about it. We are only entitled to what the Word says and how we operate in it. And when we operate in what the Word says, Amen. you know, I think I, 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 I've reflected a lot over the last week because God's really been dealing with me about this through everything that we've already done. And he just, it just went off inside of me even greater Wednesday night. Why? Say, corporate prayer. There is a power that comes. That's exactly where the disciples were. I don't care. You know, I'm not going to get into, into any theological debates about this. But history shows that this upper room wasn't even the one they were in when they had the Lord's Supper. I don't care if it was or not. What was important was that they were in one place in one accord. Let's go on. See what happens. Then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a... a of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Where did it go? We've been singing about let it rise. So let me ask you this, when are you going to let it rise? I remember and I was thinking about this this morning as we sang that song. Dad Hagen used to have a, a shirt. It said, born to raise hell. And raised meant, when you looked it up, that wasn't R-A-S-E, it was R-A-Z-E. Meant to tear it up. I was born for one reason. That was not only to be a child of the king, but to operate by his spirit. And if I don't operate by his spirit, somebody says, well, how often do you do that? Every time the, 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 the opportunity presents itself. I've had the opportunity to lay hands on people in gas stations and see God heal them. I've had the opportunity to do it here. I've had the opportunity to raise the dead. I've had the opportunity to watch wheelchairs left at crusades when they walked out. Was that something that I did? No, it's a move of the Holy Ghost is what it is. And it's not something that I'm supposed to do. It's something that we do. It's something that every disciple does. It's something that every disciple is able to make a difference in the world today that will... Let's just read what it does. I'm, I'm telling you. This was given to us as a textbook, as a guide, and as an example. And if I'll do what it says, and I'll operate like it says, then what will happen is I will get the results that they got in this book. Amen. There appeared to them divided tongues as fire, and one sat on each one of them. And a church has been arguing about whether... We speak in tongues or we don't. You know, y'all can argue about that. I'm just going to do it. And I know that I'm not in a house that does that. But one of the things we've got to do is we've got to quit separating ourselves by, you know, I believe that and I don't know if I believe this and I don't know if I... You know, the Bible says that not everything was written down because not even the earth could contain the books. So I know that God's going to do some things 
that I may not be able to see black ink on white paper or red ink on white paper about, and I'm okay with God being God. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men from every nation under God. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speaking in their own language. And then they were all amazed and marveled, saying, saying to one another, Look, are these not all who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? Parathans, Medes, and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pot Pontus, and Asia, Paraguay, Palama, Egypt, and parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, criterions and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mock them, saying they're full of new wine. And the Christians all shut up because they were getting mocked. They were having rights taken away from them. That's not what happened. What happened? But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said, Men of Judea and Jerusalem, who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. In other words, I have something to say. Go down to verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you. How was he attested? By miracles, by wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know. Go down to verse 38. Hey, all of this is good in between. Read it. Not this morning here in church. Verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Now listen to me, verse 42 and 43, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in a breaking of bread, and in what? In what? Then fear came upon every... No. Oh, 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 oh. They ostracized them and they took all the rights away from them that they had and they just quit. Verse 43 says, Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Go over to... Uh, Chapter 4. I'm going to take you a walk through chapter 3 because we're not going to take time to read it this morning. Peter and John were going up to the temple. What did Jesus say? Let my house be what? What were they going for? 
Say corporate prayer. Do you know how I know it was corporate prayer? Because they weren't the only ones in the place. They might have been the only ones praying to Jesus. I don't know that. But there was two of them. So that means that they weren't individually going. They were going for corporate prayer. If you want to know if I think there's power in corporate prayer, this place is going to be open every single day from 10 o'clock in the morning till 5 or 6 o'clock at night. And if you want to come in the evening, all you got to do is call and say, would you leave the church open? And we will. A place where we can come for corporate prayer together. This is a house of prayer. And it's in that place that the Holy Spirit begins to deal with us and begins to work with us and begins to do... I, you know, I know we've had what we call prayer on the porch and for a long time it was on the porch and, and now, um, praise God, Kelly has continued to uh, Facebook out prayer on the porch and what we're praying for. But I'm going to tell you, there's a power about coming into the house and spending time. And just because there's not hay bales in the front anymore doesn't mean that you can't kneel down either at that or grab you a chair or whatever it takes or lay on your face. Posture in prayer is not what's important. It's that we're doing it. But Peter and John are walking up to the, to the house of prayer. And he says, I don't have anything but any money. But I do have something that you need. What did he do? He reached out and he took a lame man by the hand. And he said, walk. I think that the church has been so moved... by landmark decisions that have been made on our behalf. I, I got to tell you, I, I'm not a doom and gloomer. <clears throat> there was something that was real interesting to me that I clicked on the other day to see what it had to say. And this guy was so full of doom and gloom, I couldn't get off of it quick enough. Telling me about everything that the administration is trying to do. I really don't care what they're trying to do. Does that mean that I'm going to vote for them again? No, I didn't vote for them the first time. But it means that I'm going to be more concerned about what God's Word says and that I operate in what that Word says and it'll shut the mouth of the administration. It'll shut the mouth of the naysayers. Because Peter and John, they got arrested in the third chapter. Oh, by the way, that was after 5,000 came to know Jesus. And all they were upset by... You know what I thought was interesting when I was looking around at these videos about prayer and stuff? Do you know who's got behind the governor in Alabama to get prayer back in the schools? This, you're going to love this. The Satanists have. Because even the devil knows there's power in prayer. How do you think he knows it? Because he's been defeated so many times through Christians in corporate prayer that operate in the Holy Ghost. He wants to try to get some of it for him. That ought to be an indication of how much power you have. Chapter 4, just in case you're wondering if I'm passionate about this, I'm going to tell you. The move of the Holy Spirit will turn this country upside down. And it can start at Silver Auto Cowboy Church in Weatherford, Texas. How do you think they know You know, I can't even remember the name of that church now. 
I just remember that in, in Canada, a lot, of the, a lot of the Holy Spirit songs we sang from, this was late 70s, after the, after the move of the Holy Spirit, it kind of s- stopped. Vineyard. Airport Vineyard is what it was called. Airport Vineyard. Move of the Holy Spirit. I mean, for, for almost a decade that went on. We have a lot of the, the songs that we've sang come out of that. A lot of the power that we saw happening through the, what they called the charismatic revival. (laughs) I love how we put names on things when the Holy Spirit does something. And then it went from Airport Vineyard, then it went to Brownsville. And people stood in line for hours and days to get into Brownsville. I know because I didn't do it, but I know a couple of people that did. Glenn Smith told me, he says, I stood for two days in that line just to get into the church for one night. I wanted to see. Now, this is a man that the the Holy Spirit moved through all the time. He just wanted to see what God was doing. It is time that we make a difference to where it will cause all of the naysayers to go because nobody will listen to them anymore because of the move of the Holy Spirit because of how you turn a world upside down because of how we make change how it causes somebody all the way from Greenville to come that has lung cancer to be healed just because she heard that Silverado Cowboy Church believes in healing. That doesn't have to happen here. I mean, it's cool that it does. But it ought to happen in our everyday lives. And when it does, they'll be beating your door down to get to know Jesus Christ as as their Savior. I said we were going to the fourth chapter, didn't I? So let's look at uh, verse 8. Now, this is uh, Peter and John. Actually, it's Peter talking. So I have to believe that based on some of the things that it says, that they saw something on John, even though John didn't have his mouth open. You know what I think I love about John? This is a side note. Does anybody remember what what was John known as? The one that Jesus loved. Yeah. You know what I love about that? You know what I love about that? He had an opinion that was the truth. Now, did he love John more than he did any other, other disciples? The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. world. So, <clears throat> verse 8. I don't know what that was about, but that was just something that came up in me. That's right, we're all special. Just because I'm his favorite doesn't, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. but Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. What was Peter done? What did he do? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. That happened on the day of Pentecost. Oh, you think maybe he got filled again when he went into corporate prayer? Do you think he got filled again when he was... And Jesus said this. He said, don't worry about what you're going to say because I'll bring to remembrance and I'll teach you. How's he going to do that? Through the Holy Spirit. Spirit. It's what it takes. It takes the Holy Spirit. Now, 
Now Peter, being filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and people of, of people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means? What was that man? Why was he helpless? He was crippled. He needed help. Do you come in contact with people that need help every day? Yes. What kind of help are you going to give them? Hand them a dollar out the window so they'll leave you alone? Guy stands here with a sign next to the window and you just reach up and you hand him a dollar and roll the window back up and hope he'll leave. Instead of saying silver and gold, I don't have. But what I do have is I have know Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Do you know that he can cause you to have everything you need? I like preaching to Dick, you know. He, he receives and he smiles at me. Some people want to look away because they're afraid. That they think I'll go away and then I won't bother them anymore. It probably ain't going to happen. I'll, I'll walk back a little ways in a minute. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. This is a stone which was rejected by you builders, which was, became the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among men whereby ye must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, wait a minute, Peter was the only one that talked. How could they see the boldness of John? I'm going to tell you, John didn't stand there with his head down. John stood there with the boldness that they noticed. Boldness only comes from one place. And it's not because I'm bigger and badder than anybody else in the country. But it's because of the move of God in your life. And the power of the Holy Spirit in that place. And now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they hadn't been to Bible school and they hadn't been to, to seminary. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, They could say nothing against it. When you move in signs and wonders, turn to verse 23. When you move in signs and wonders, they don't have anything else to say. You want to see them shut their mouth? Move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the world today. Moved by signs and wonders. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons. They'll heal the sick. They'll cleanse the lepers. They'll raise the dead. They'll drink any deadly thing and it won't harm them. There is a promise. You can take it to the bank. It's even better. Listen to me. I'm not discounting anything that Janet said. I'm encouraging you to listen. But it's even better than the money God will give you. When you move... In the power of the Holy Spirit, I promise you that people's lives will change. When you move by signs and wonders, people's lives will change. Don't figure out whether you're trying to move in the Holy Spirit by the fact if they get slain in the Spirit or they don't. 
Sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. If I understood that, they'd all get slain in the Holy Ghost. Because I just watch what God does when they're laying there on the floor. But I've never figured out why God does that sometimes and why he doesn't other times. That's not the formula. The formula is only one thing. Father, whatever you want to do, I just want to be part of it. Let me operate in it. Father, I don't want to watch somebody else. I want to watch the power of God move through me because I want to see people's lives changed. I got one picture that comes up on my computer every time I get into my pictures. The first, and I don't know why this happens. I'll never forget this woman. I don't have any idea how old she was. I just know that up until that time, when they carried her out of a crowd, pastors carried her out over her head, screaming. Because the demons that were in her. And they kept trying to get that demon cast out, kept trying to get that demon cast out. And I grabbed her by the ears. I said, in the name of Jesus, you come out now. Literally picked her up off the ground. I don't, I'm not telling you to do that, okay? Only if God leads you to. And the Holy Ghost told me right then, said, you do that. And I picked her up off the ground by her ears. And the next night, I saw change. She says, I've been tormented for 18 years. I'm just glad that I got to be there. Because I got to see the power of God. Because, of, because it was me? No, it wasn't me. It was the name of Jesus. It was the signs and wonders that follow. It's the signs and wonders that confirm the Word. It's the Word that it confirms. Who is the Word? His name is Jesus. What did I say? Verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. <laughs> Do you know what they did to me? <laughs> they told me I couldn't pray in school. They told me not to say the name of Jesus anymore. That's not what they did. Read the next verse. The next verse says they had corporate prayer. And then look down at uh, verse 38. There isn't one. I'm sorry, verse 31, thank you. I was reading in my notes up farther. We was going to have church for another two hours. Now the multitude of those who believed, actually, no, verse 31, not 32, and when they had, what? Where were they at? Corporate prayer, okay. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the Word of God with meekness. They spoke the Word of God with boldness. Go to chapter 5. By the way, this is going to be the last place I read today. But it's not where the story ends. That uh, video that I played, it said at the end that it was done by the story of liberty.net. I looked up the story of liberty.net and unless I typed something in wrong, I couldn't even find them. 
The only reason I shared that is because we shouldn't let that be the defining thing in our life. I got a whole list of the court things that were done from the late 1940s up leading up to 1963. Well, what I realized was some of the time that all of these court battles are going on <coughs> were the time that the greatest move of the Holy Spirit was ever taking place. See, Smith Wigglesworth, John Somerville, uh, not John Somerville. <laughs> John Osteen. No, I was thinking of uh, Lester Summerall when I said John Somerville. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, there's another name that's not afraid to move. What we have to remember is when these things were going on, the men of God didn't slow down. They didn't get... Uh, Gloria talked about him the other night. Um, thank you. Gordon Lindsay. Christ for the nations. Those guys didn't slow down. Oral Roberts was traveling in the big tent then. And I could go on and on and on with the names. Do you know what, it, what, what made it stop? Was everybody was following the men. Instead of following the same Holy Spirit they were. Because there's no reason for the stop. I'm not moved by what the court does in the United States. I'm moved by what my father does. If you're moved by what the Holy Spirit says about you, then you won't be stopped and you won't slow down. Chapter 5, verse 12. Everybody thought I was going to start in 1 so that we could talk about how the power of the Holy Spirit shuts up lying. Um, you know, well, that happens. If you'll move in signs and wonders, I promise you that the administration won't be able to lie about what the Word does and what it says and who the power of God is. We, we won't even have to be concerned about what the Muslims are doing because the Muslims can't walk in the same power that you can. Don't just bring on prayer. Let's bring on a move of the Holy Ghost. Let's move by signs and wonders. I don't need to watch what somebody else is doing. I need to be a part of it. I don't need to let my pastor come home and tell of what God's doing. I need to be doing it so that all he does is share the same kind of testimony that I'm living on a daily basis. And through the hands of the apostles... Many signs and wonders were done, done among the people. And they were all with... In Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest of them dared to join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out, of the, out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow, shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Whose shadow do you think it was? Was there power in Peter's shadow? It was the Holy Ghost. Peter just happened to be one that let the power of the Holy Spirit be resident in him. And he didn't get defined by the fact that he had denied Christ three times before the rooster crowed. He didn't get defined by the fact that he had let the Lord down too many times. 
He didn't get defined by the fact that he picked up a sword and cut off that guy's ear in the garden and Jesus reached up and put the ear back on and said, Peter, don't do that. He didn't get defined by the fact that he wasn't the smartest guy out there. He didn't even know where to fish sometimes. The Lord had to tell him to let the net down on the other side of the boat. He got defined by who God was in him. Amen. 16. And also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities in Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all disappointed and went home. Why were they all healed? Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which was of the sect of the Sadducees, and they were all filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in a common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple... Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. don't go run and hide before they tell you to shut up again. Go stand in the temple and speak to all the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with the elders and the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Down through what it happened through the... <laughs> Paul's preaching. And a guy falls out of the window on the second story. And Paul goes down and lays on him and says, rise up. And went back upstairs. And he didn't get overjoyed because the guy rose up. He expected it to happen. He just went on preaching. Don't be moved by the power that moves in you. But be moved by that power to fulfill the call that God's given in your life. Don't be impressed is what I'm saying. I've had people tell me. Well, you know, you just, you just, the way you pray, you just, you, you really couldn't care. Guy had cancer. When I got done praying for him, I just turned around and walked away. He says, you don't really care. I said, I do, but I expect it to happen. And I wasn't disappointed. He wasn't either. Took him five months to get, get, get to, to receive his healing. I don't know how long Janet's deal was about her leg. <clears throat> Truthfully, I, I don't remember praying for you. And, it, it, and it's only because we shouldn't be moved by. Here's what we've, we've got to be moved by. It's the power of God. And God's not going to do it without you. He's going to do it with you. He's going to do it through you. Will he use somebody else if you don't? Yeah. You know, I want so much of what he has. I told... Uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to leave with this. And I've given this testimony before, so it's not new. One day I watched a bus drive by, brand new bus. We're in Lagos, Nigeria. No, I'm sorry, we were in Asaba, Nigeria. And uh, I told James, we've been, we've been traveling in junk cars, no air conditioning, hot. 
told him the other day I was so cold here I just might need to get to Nigeria so I could get warmed up. And uh, I looked at James and I said, you see that bus right there? We're going to have something like that to travel in. And he says, Dad. I said, you know, God can do all kinds of things. And four months later, somebody handed him the keys to a brand new little minibus. Paid the title on it. And we weren't traveling in junk cars anymore. I told that because now I hear him say this. I'll say, we'll say this or that and, you know, about things that we need or we need to see my God move in this place or do this. Or, or we'll be talking about whether it's money or a church we need to open. Or, and he'll say, Dad, watch what God will do. And here's what I know. You have no idea what God will do in you and through you if you'll get out of the way and let him do it. If we don't get so moved by the circumstances that surround us, Matt, I'm going to give you a word. The Lord has brought this up in me several times this morning. <clears throat> Sometimes the guys that you're working with look like they're never going to get change. God said if you'll move in signs and wonders, they'll get change in their life. And he'll surround you with people that move by the Holy Spirit. You know, he directed me to give that word to Matt. But that actually is a word about all of us. Amen. If you want to hang around with people that move by signs and wonders, start moving in signs and wonders. Right. And then you'll be hanging around with each other all the time. <laughs> Don't make corporate prayer a once a month thing. And don't make me set the time or the date. Just don't be afraid to come. Because here's what will happen if, if you come in here. You'll find out that the, the, that the more of you that come, the more of you that will come. The more of you that will make this a stopping place. I thought about that this morning. <clears throat> um... I know nobody believes that I'm afraid to go drink a cup of coffee at Starbucks in the morning. But I'm also not afraid to make this my first stop. Somebody goes, well, yeah, but you live here. No, I don't live inside the church. And it might mean that I have to get up just a little bit earlier. So the church door might be open sooner than you think. Move by signs and wonders. Do what the Lord told me this week. He said, you asked me for a house. How much time do you spend with me in that house? I said, well, I spend a lot of time with you in my office and stuff. He said, I didn't ask you that. Yeah, I felt about like that, Tom. <clears throat> if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, Today's the day. Amen. Don't leave this building without it. Amen. Somebody goes, well, I don't even know if I believe it. Well, if you don't believe it, you need to get out of the way and just let God do what he wants to do. Amen. There's a time that I wouldn't raise my hands when the singing was going because if they told me to raise my hands, I was going to shove them in my pocket. And what I found out was when I raised my hands, I forgot about myself and I, f I figured out who the Lord was. So I quit putting limits on him. Don't put limits on God. Let God do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and, and let him use you.
Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us. You know, if that's you and you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, John and Gloria and, I, and Kathleen and I will hang around up here and uh, we'll be glad to, to uh, pray with you, share with you, and, uh, and, 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 I, and we'll stay till you receive. We don't have to tarry. It's something that'll happen right now. Father, we thank you for your word and how it works in our life. Father, I thank you for each and every person here. I thank you for how your word gives us an example of life. And Father, just like Janet said earlier today, that this is our lifestyle. This isn't something we're going to try or something we're going to look at, but Father, that it's our lifestyle. I pray over those watching by internet and those in this room that, Father, we will move by signs and wonders that we'll see a move of the Holy Spirit through each one of us that will turn Weatherford, Texas upside down. That it will turn the country upside down. Father, I thank you for this. I praise you for this. And I give you glory and honor and power in the mighty name of Jesus and by his blood. Amen. Just before you go, something that just came back to my, my mind and I think I'm supposed to say it. What I've talked about today about moving by signs and wonders. I'm going to tell you where Roe versus Wade started. Does anybody know where it started? The state is called Texas. And it was because Texas made a stand that they would not do abortions on anybody unless the mother's life was in danger. So when I pray that by signs and wonders you'll move in this town and in this world. I'm telling you, we can turn them upside down all over again. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your Savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and he is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching. And so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. 
Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation, uh, the buck outs and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo, and uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you He'll take care of you, and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you, and so do we.